Well, this past weekend, 18 Republican senators wrapped up their journey to the U.S. southern border. On his Twitter account, Texas Senator Ted Cruz shared an encounter. He says it highlights what he is calling a lack of transparency from the Biden administration. Oh, you were instructed. When 18 I senators ask you came to down here, respect the people, give them dignity I respect, and respect them, and I want to fix this situation. We all want and to fix this. The administration this, you're working for is responsible anymore. for these conditions. Please respect the people with dignity and respect. And sir. I ask you to respect the, the people as well. This I am is respecting not respect. you. I well, besides crowded conditions, the senators say that they observed illegal boarding crossings and sometimes heard taunts across the river from drug cartels. Well, joining us now is Vince Colonnais, editorial director of The Daily Caller. Vince, thank you so much for joining us. Now, thank over you. the weekend, The Daily Caller had reporters down at the U.S.-Mexico border. What exactly did they find? They found every hour hundreds of migrants crossing the border, many of them from Central America. And as they crossed, they went straight to Border Patrol. Uh, their goal was to turn themselves in and to begin the process of immigrating in the United States. The effect is, of course, that there's a lot of the people who arrived uh, identified as being children, as being of age to be able to make an asylum claim. And that begins the government process of processing them inside of these detention centers. We've got very little look into uh, what little look we've had. We've gotten courtesy of senators like Ted Cruz and Democrat Congressman Henry Cuellar. Uh, and then eventually those kids will be uh, allowed into the United States. Uh, it's a process that has overwhelmed the Biden administration. And our reporters at The Daily Caller spent several days on the border with the Border Patrol watching very closely as wave after wave of migrants came across the southern border. And we're hearing that many of these people are being released, uh, just in fact, even some without court dates. And what do you think about these senators going down to the border? Is it a publicity stunt or... Would you say that it's effective? I would say it's an effective use of politics. The point of politics is that we decide who runs the country and whose policies we prefer. And Republicans, while they're in the minority in the Senate and the House right now, and they don't have the White House, the one thing they can do is, at least in this issue, is demonstrate some transparency about what our government's doing. So they're using their access to those facilities to bring that story to the American public and ultimately to convince voters to choose Republicans by the midterms uh, now, a little less than two years away. So, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of a political tactic, effective. In terms of transparency for the public, it was a big win as well. It was important to be able to see what's going on inside those facilities. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, well, do you think that this is going to have any effect on how the Biden administration is handling the situation down there at the border? Uh, you know, the Biden administration has done everything it can to minimize this as a crisis. In fact, uh, Although President Trump, uh, President Biden rather, has put Vice President Kamala Harris in charge of the border crisis, she indicated yet again today she has no intention of actually visiting the border and seeing the crisis that she's supposed to be managing. Uh, the administration is routinely not referred to this as a crisis, but instead as merely a challenge. But internal documents that both uh, the Wall Street Journal and Axios reported on over the weekend indicate that the Biden administration, while they're publicly saying that this is totally normal, there's nothing unusual about the surge on the border, that they're planning on record numbers to cross our border every month through September of this year. Uh, really big numbers. The Biden administration knows they're on the way. Uh, but as far as the public facing side of it, they're acting like there's nothing to see here. But no doubt she should head on down to the border, should she not? Absolutely. If you want to get your arms around the crisis that you're supposed to be trying to fix, you need to be at the border. And over the weekend, uh, let's switch gears now. Over the weekend, the state of Georgia passed voting reform, and that would restore voter confidence, they say, in the election process. You know, Democrats disagree with the Republican governor, but what do you think about the measure there in Georgia? Well, there have been some vile attacks on this law, so vile that it makes you think, like, goodness, is it possible that anybody could support it? Last week, the president of the United States uh, invented an analogy during his press conference, said that this makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle, uh, suggesting some sort of uh, uh, very racist bill going on in Georgia. The truth is, if you actually take a look at the legislation, it expands early voting in Georgia. It makes permanent things like drop boxes for absentee ballots. It codifies and makes permanent uh, no-excuse absentee voting, and it has a regular audit of 
um, election lines to make sure that no line lasts longer than an hour at any polling place. And if it does, that in future elections, those lines are, are made smaller and smaller by giving people more access to more polls. The reality of what's in the legislation is shockingly different, in fact, than what we see in the media. There was a lot of attention placed on the idea that people won't be able to get water handed to them in right. these lines. That's the way it's right. been construed in the press. The truth is that uh, the, the law goes out of its way to say that they don't want people giving food and drinks as a form of bribery to encourage people to vote for the candidate of their preference. Right. And if anybody needs water, that election officials have to make it available to them at the polling sites. Well, Vince, we can talk about this all day, but thank you so much for joining us. Vince Colonnese, editorial director of The Daily Caller. Thank you so much, Vince. My pleasure. Thanks.